This dog's breakfast of a rolling parts bin has proved surprisingly popular. I think because it was a low effort bill using mainly the scrapings off my workshop floor, uh, it seems to have captured a few people's imaginations. Um, it has, however, suffered from one very predictable and very annoying problem, which I thought would be useful to discuss because I know a lot of my fellow butchers would be interested in hearing how it happens and how we're going to fix it. The problem, in short, is how to keep the chain on the thing. Now, when you're converting a bike that was designed for a double or triple chain set to a single ring transmission, which I've done here with this 2010 105 chain set, um, first of all, you're going to contend with the fact that the teeth on the chain ring are not intended to be a single ring. Um, you can see that these teeth are profiled for shifting. You don't want the chain shifting off this ring, so there's your first problem. Um, the second thing is the chain line, and if you look down it, right now the line from the sprockets at the back to the ring is entirely straight but then when you're shifting gears up and down this block you find that the chain is running in an s-bend which of course almost acts like a front derailleur causing it to shift off that front ring and the third thing is if you're doing it retro or vintage like i've done with this 1999 xt rear mech you're going to deal with two factors number one these rear mechs predate the clutch mechanism which stops them flapping about and number two you're often going to find that this spring here is going to be floppier and not quite as springy as you want it to be. Um, there are other factors, um, which I will come to, that cause the chain to basically, in the case of this bike, uh, jump off on the outside of the, uh, the chain ring. Now you can see I've tried to fix it using this gusset chain device and I'm also going to come back to that in a minute. Now the easy solution for a cartel of unimaginably wealthy gentleman collectors is of course to throw money and resources at the problem, but that wouldn't make this a very interesting video and I'm not going to waste wolf tooth chain ring or one of these lovely XT rear mechs on basically a butcher's dustbin of a bike. I'm doing this cheap and dirty, far more interesting. So the first thing I did that was cheap and dirty was consign the original 9-speed XT cassette to my museum up in the rafters and replaced it, you will have seen, I'm sure, on the previous video with this rather horrible cheap Bolani unit off Amazon, which is fine, but when you put a brand new cassette on um, an already used chain, even though the chain that was on it was barely worn, um, you find that, especially when you're doing it on the cheap, the chain starts skipping about. Now that's another factor that causes the chains to come off um, a chain ring, because if the chain is jumping, which this one was, on the sort of lower to mid sprocket, then the action of jumping obviously causes it to sort of ship itself free here. So having put a brand new nine speed chain on the thing, the next thing I tried to do was bodge uh, a chain keeper for the front chain ring. Went to my derailleur museum, found these two period correct XT front mechs, um, correct band diameter and everything. Um, so I clamped this thing on, but then I found that Quite simply, you can't use, and there's a reason why very few people successfully do this, you can't use an old front mech, no matter how minutely you adjust it, as a substitute for one of these chain devices. The reason being that the, uh, the front mech obviously is not designed to stop the chain moving this way, often in a ring, because of course, if you're using front mech, it's assumed that the inner ring has an outer ring sitting next to it. So long story short, it didn't work. You could set it up so that it was keeping the chain perfectly in line, but because the cage touches the chain before the chain touches the chain ring, as soon as you shift the chain from the lowest to the highest, for example, of course it moves laterally and starts rubbing. So, long story short, aborted. So with the gusset device in place, and this is called the Lil Chap, that's its name, um, the adjustment of it is, I can tell you, very annoying. You've got to adjust it up, down, in, out, twisty. Uh, there's quite a lot of dimensions that you have to consider. Um, and I've basically done it so that you can only just, if at all, see daylight through it. There you go. Because again, when you shift gears and this chain starts to move from side to side, it starts to rub. But when I first set it up, there was too much space here. And I found that it forced itself, because this is plastic and has a certain amount of flex in it, it still managed to force itself off. And when the chain's coming off this way and getting tangled in the pedal and so on, it's a dirty and annoying job getting it back on. So... New chain, chain device, what's next? Here's another cheap and dirty solution, which I actually think is gonna make a difference. These things are surprisingly abundant on the internet. I think I paid about three quid for this. Uh, it arrived today. I, I'm pretty sure it dates back to the 90s. Um, the silver ones are abundant, but you can get purple if you really wanna geek out. Now, what this does is enhances the springiness of this bit. Now, it's not gonna replace the clutch action, 
that you would get on a more modern rear mech, but it's gonna basically grip onto this tab here and pull it that way so that this thing doesn't flap about but keeps the chain nice and taut. So let's get it fitted and see if it works. This is really neat. All you do is replace the derailleur's barrel adjuster with this longer one, sit this little aluminium arm sort of flush against the derailleur with a hole in it here. And of course the barrel adjuster holds it in place. So you can't use this anymore to adjust your indexing, but then of course you don't need to because the shifters have got barrel adjusters of their own and these have got more than enough latitude in them to adjust even the most ham-fisted of uh, gear setups. This must be the best three quid I've ever spent. Even just the setup is an absolute delight. Um, this is the next component that goes, slides neatly onto this tab here. It says compatible with most derailleurs. It looks like it was tailor-made for a 99 XT. Should just slide straight on. Yep, yeah, it does. Um, then it held in place with these two little two mil hex grub screws. So I'll tighten them up. And then finally, all you have to do is this little hole here connects to this little hole here with a spring, which enhances this. Delightfully primitive, but very cute. So having casually described this thing as a low effort build, I've now contradicted myself by painstakingly adjusting a brand new chain device putting on a new chain, a new cassette, a derailleur tensioner, um, and all of those hours that have gone into what I don't even know has yet fixed the problem. But one thing's for sure, I am not going to give in and put a wolf tooth chain ring and a nice new derailleur or a brand new transmission on this thing because that would be too much like quitting. So watch this space, let's see if this thing works. <laughs> 